Hi all, this is my channel Mohini Yadav and today we will discuss about the categorical variables versus quantitative variables and the distinction of the variable is very important for any research beginner because this term is going to be used frequently in various research papers. So it is very important for all the prospective researchers to know and in case at the end of my video it, you like it then please like my video and also share with your friends or with your colleagues or all the research scholars you, you think can take the advantage out of it thank you so before moving ahead we'll understand about data so data is classified into two types that is categorical data and quantitative data categorical data is the data which can be grouped by specific categories or classes Whereas, whereas quantitative data uses the numeric values to indicate how much or how many observations are there in the classes. So in terms of categorical, they use either the nominal scale or the ordinal scale of measurement where quantitative data uses either the interval or the ratio scale of measurement. So this is the types of data and when we talk about variables, so a categorical variable is a variable which has categorical data whereas the quantitative variable is a variable which has quantitative data. So variable is something which we are going to measure in our research and in case the variable has the categorical data, we say that the variable is categorical variable. Similarly, if the variable has quantitative data, we say that the variable is quantitative variable. So now the statistical analysis appropriate for a particular variable depends whether the variable is categorical or quantitative. So when we talk about categorical, then the statistical analysis is very limited. Why? Because the categorical data only explains the categories which can basically identify the type of the data. So in this case, the data can be summarized by either counting the observations in each category or you can compute the proportion of the observations in each category. So in overall, the categorical data are identified by a numerical code, but still the arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication or division cannot provide us any meaningful result. So in case the data is categorical, we can not summarize it in a very effective manner. We can only provide the counts or the proportions of the observations. Okay. And in case the data is quantitative data, then we have more alternatives for statistical analysis and arithmetic operations can also be done on the quantitative data and we can gain much more meaningful results out of it. Okay. So let's understand how we can summarize the data for categorical variable. For example, this is the data we have from the sample of 56 TV purchases in the month of January 2020. And these are the brands of TV. So these are the sample of 56 TV brands. Okay. So this is the categorical data because only the identification of the brand is given. So in this case, we can summarize it by using the frequency distribution and relative frequency. So what is frequency distribution? Frequency distribution is a tabular summary of data showing the number of observations in each category. So this is the tabular summary where this is first column is the TV brand that is Sony, Panasonic, LG and Samsung and frequency says that how many times this Sony has repeated in the sample. So we have manually counted all the Sony TV brands and we have written the frequency here. Similarly for Panasonic we have counted how many times the Panasonic brand has been purchased by the consumer and similarly for LG and Samsung. So this is the frequency distribution and with the help of that you can summarize the categorical variables. Similarly there is one more measure that is relative frequency. So the formula for relative frequency of any category or class is frequency of the class divided by n. n is the number of your sample. So in this case Sony the frequency is 13 
but it is divided by 56 that is the total in order to calculate the relative frequency so this is 0.23 panasonic is 0.20 that is 11 by 56 lg is 0.28 and samsung is 0.28 so the total of relative frequency is always close to 1 and if you compute the percentage relative frequency distribution then each value will be multiplied with 100 so this will be 23% 20%, 28%, 28%. So, this is one of the measure of summarizing the categorical variable. The other is bar charts and pie charts. So, bar chart is a graphical display for de depicting the categorical data which is summarized in a frequency or relative frequency distribution. So, I have made a bar chart on the basis of frequency distribution. So, I know Samsung has repeated 16 times. LG has repeated 16 times, Sony 13 and Panasonic 11. So, this is the graphical representation whereas the frequency distribution is a tabular representation. Okay. So, the next is pie chart and pie chart is also the another way of pre uh, presenting the graphical display of relative frequency and percentage frequency distribution. So, in this case, I have made the percentage frequency distribution where LG and Samsung are 28%, 28% and Panasonic and Sony are 20% and 23% respectively. So, this is, the, this is how we can summarize the data for categorical variable. And now you can see that it is true that no, uh, not much measures are available in order to present it because these are just the categories or the identification of a variable and we cannot do any arithmetic operations. We cannot add or subtract anything. So, these are the most commonly used ways of summarizing the categorical data. When it comes to summarizing the data for quantitative variable, for example, we have this data in hand which is the waiting time of the patients in minutes who requested the emergency service in the month of January 2020. So, this data is in minutes and this is for the sample of 40 patients. Okay. So, the first way of measuring this is frequency distribution and as we have discussed in the categorical variable, the same uh, definition is there in the quantitative variable as well but there are certain steps which we have to use under this. So, first step is that we have to identify the number of classes. So, as a general guideline researchers can use any class between 5 to 20 classes as per their data requirement and as per the sample size. So, in our case since the n is 40 so, we assume as it to be a 6 classes only because it is not much data. Similarly, the next step involves that we have to ascertain the width of the class and in order to calculate the approximate class width, we can use this formula which is largest data value minus smallest data value divided by number of classes. So, in this case, we have assumed the number of classes as to be 6. You can assume differently also it is up to the requirement of a researcher only and the largest value under this data is 19 and the smallest value is 2. So, when you divide 17 by 6 this is 2.8 or you can take the next higher value that is 3 and after that you have to calculate the class limits that you have to identify and you have to strictly assign a low limit and the higher limit of your class interval so that none of the value is belonging to more than one class. So, each item should belong in just one class limit only. Okay. So, this is the table that I have prepared in which the class width is 3, number of classes are 6 and I have made a, this is a inclusive class interval wherein every data is inclusive. So, 2, 3, 4 all the 3 variables uh, all the 3 data is included into this class interval. Similarly, in 5 to 7, 5, 6, 7 all the 3 ones are included. Okay. So, we can manually calculate that in the class interval 2 to 4 how many times 
टू थ्री फोर हैज रिपीटेड सो वी हैव टू मैनुअली कैलकुलेट द फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड इन दिस वे वी कैन कैलकुलेट द फ्रीक्वेंसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विच इज जस्ट अ टैबुलर रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ योर डेटा Similarly, we can also prepare the relative frequency of distribution and the percentage frequency of distribution. So we already have this data in hand, and we can now simply use that formula. That is the frequency divided by n. So this will be uh, in order to calculate this. So this will be 13 divided by 40, 11 divided by 40, 5 by 40, 5 by 40, 3 by 40, and 3 by 40. and in case to calculate it as a percentage we'll multiply each value with 100 so this is how we can calculate the relative frequency distribution and percentage frequency distribution so the third one is histogram so for histogram you can directly use the frequency or you can also use the relative frequency it is a very similar form of bar charts you can just graphically present your data into this format so these are the options which are available for representing the quantitative variable in excel there are many more like leaf and stem and dot plot which you can explore and in case you want a separate video for that particular graphs please write in the comment section and i'll also provide the link for downloading this presentation in the description below so please hit a like button and also subscribe to my channel in case you haven't so because this kind of uh subscription and likes motivate a video maker to make more videos so please do it and uh keep waiting for more videos and keep motivating me thank you so much